I want to talk to you all about one last thing before we get up out of here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this might come as a shocker to you, but did you know there are, there are times, people, there are times where Big Pharma actually believes that it is okay to bribe people. They bribed officials, people. Can you believe that? Big Pharma would never. I know that's what you're thinking, but here we are. The story's right here. And we all know this, the news always tells the truth. NHS officials took 70,000 euro, 70, uh, euro bribes from drug companies to recommend their medicine to GPs. NHA, NHS officials took 70,000 euros from drug companies to recommend their medicines to, to GPs, a court was told. General provider, I was, I'm assuming that's what that means. Uh, medicine boss, Paul Jerram, and Dr. David Turner allegedly acted as paid influencers for pharmaceutical companies by promoting prescription drugs to doctors in exchange for secret payments. Jurors were told that Jerem was paid by businessman Noel Staunton, whose consultancy firm represented pharmaceutical companies. As a result of their corrupt seven-year scheme on the Isle of Wight, the court heard the integrity of NHS doctors making honest recommendations about prescription drugs was breached and medicines were improperly pushed to GP surgeries and advisory boards. Oh, and advisory boards too, you say? Now, obviously, ladies and gentlemen, this is in the UK. This is not in the US. However, pharmaceutical companies have more influence over healthcare officials in the US than they do in the UK, if you can believe that. So, uh, now this isn't me saying this, this is the courts. This is the UK courts, British courts. Okay? This isn't me. So what you're telling me is, is that general practitioners or primary care providers and advisory boards and other healthcare officials. They saw one science, right? They knew and accepted generally one science when it came to the prescribing of medications to their patients. They knew that there was a science that they should rely upon when making that decision. But upon being offered a, let's just say incentive, to ignore the science they knew, but instead push a separate science, not previously generally accepted, but accepted now that money has been introduced into the picture. All of a sudden, the science wasn't the science anymore, but now this science is now the science. And, your pa and the patients were just told to trust said science. That said science is now the generally accepted science. And the courts say, not Nico, just the courts. The courts actually say that taking bribes, if you can believe this, from drug companies led to corruption in the decision-making of medical professionals. Well, hold up. Now, is there something happening right now where pharmaceutical companies are getting massive kickbacks monetarily, having some of their drugs pushed onto the general public, okay? After donating hundreds and hundreds of millions to politicians over the last decade or so, in addition to donating hundreds and hundreds of millions to the FDA, which approved a lot of this stuff. And then of course, having the revolving door from the FDA into the pharmaceutical industry, and then having the pharmaceutical industry send people into the FDA. 
And then having people from Congress go into the pharmaceutical industry. Okay. Uh, so if the courts are saying that money from healthcare professionals or money paid to healthcare professionals and healthcare officials by pharmaceutical companies creates an environment of corruption that could lead to the science not being the science when the science needs to be the science. Are you trying to tell me that there is a, a small chance, it's just a tiny little chance that maybe some of the decision-making that we've been dealing with lately could actually be a reflection of the money being given to them by the pharmaceutical industry rather than the science and that this idea of trusting the science is complete and total bullshit is that what you're trying to tell me that's what it seems like because i was assured people i was assured that by even by some leftists i've been assured that it is silly for me to think that even though pharmaceutical companies have shown me over and 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 over again that we cannot trust them that they will fail us that people will die and that we should just accept it even though they've shown me to be that i've been attacked by leftists supposedly they're leftists for not trusting them this one time because this is different this is this one is the different one actually Pharmaceutical, the pharmaceutical industry is making more money right now than they've ever made because of, you know what I'm talking about. And this is supposed to be the different time. Yeah, the difference is they've been given more, they're making more money now than they've ever made before. That's the difference. So there's a higher likelihood that we're being lied to. There's a higher likelihood that the environment created between this revolving door between the FDA, the pharmaceutical industry and Congress has big, has created a breeding ground for corruption. I mean, this is, this is logic. This is the simplest of logic in a national healthcare system. People literally a system where everything's just paying for itself for the most part, not literally because there's obviously taxes and things like that. But even in that system where you're, you would think that doctors wouldn't have or advisors or things like they wouldn't be taking that kind of money to influence those type of outcomes. Cause it just, you would assume that everybody has enough. It won't be necessary, but corruption seems to find the, 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 the smallest of crevices to creep through when it needs to. And that's a decent healthcare system. Now imagine ours where there's effectively no accountability. Hmm. Makes you wonder, don't it?